Hey everybody, Justin with ExtremeTerrain.com here. Today we're taking a closer look at the ReadyLift High Clearance Crash Bar Kit available for all 2021 and newer Broncos. Long story short, you should be considering the ReadyLift options here for your two or four door rig. If you've upgraded the tire size, maybe went with a more aggressive offset or even a combination of both, and are making contact with the factory anti-intrusion beams, AKA crash bars. Now these affordable options from ReadyLift will install in place of your factory crash bars and offer impact protection in the event of a crash, as opposed to completely removing the bars altogether. So this really is a great product from the gang over at ReadyLift who saw an opportunity to improve, let's just say, a less than ideal scenario. You guys all know the deal, right? You go to install a brand new set of larger wheels and tires on your Bronco, only to get that dreaded rubbing on the factory crash bars while turning. Now, a lot of owners at this point will simply just remove the bars altogether for added clearance, but that's not exactly ideal as of course they do serve a purpose and that purpose is to help manage collision energy in a frontal or that overlap kind of impact. So ready lift to the rescue here again with their intrusion bar kit, AKA better known as crash bars. Now these guys will still allow Bronco owners to leave those crash bars installed of course, while at the same time still clearing their larger wheels and tires or more aggressive offsets. Now the bars themselves have been manufactured using heavy duty laser cut and robot welded steel and then finished off in a satin black powder coat. And get this guys, have been engineered and tested to meet the specifications and more importantly, the strength of the factory crash bar. Very important stuff. Now the kit from ReadyLift will include four total pieces here. You're looking at the entire kit on the table. You got two fronts, two rears for both the passenger and driver side wheel wells. These guys are just simply going to install in place of your factory crash bars. There's no crazy modification or anything like that needed. Now I'm sure everyone is asking just how big of a tire can I run and what's the most aggressive offset I can get away with with the crash bars installed. Well, unfortunately, ReadyLift says because of the numerous variables at play here between wheel size, offset, tire size, you go on and on, lift size, they can't really guarantee a certain fitment because of all of the variables I just listed. So in the words of ReadyLift, just make sure you test your wheel and tire combo first in conjunction with the bars themselves here just to make sure everything's gonna work properly. Price point for the ReadyLift options will land them in the high $100 to low $200 ballpark, and that's gonna make them one of the most affordable, high clearance options currently on the site at the time of this video, undercutting the Icon options by about 100 bucks. Now, at the end of the day, we're talking safety here. It's really hard to put a price on safety, and that's why I think this kit really is a bargain at that price point. But now we wanna shift gears and talk a little bit more about the install. And the site's gonna call this a pretty solid one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, taking you a couple of hours at absolute most to complete from start to finish. Now, depending on your bumper situation with your Bronco, you may have to remove the front bumper completely to gain access to those front crash bars. And that's mainly going to apply to all of my base bumper owners out there. Uh, those of you with the modular bumpers, you can remove the caps, gain better access to these things. But if you have that plastic base bumper, chances are it's just a lot easier to remove that first to get better access to everything you need to. Regardless, a basic socket set really is all you need here to get this particular job done. But now we're gonna throw it to an XT customer to walk you through the job. Check it out. So for the install, I used um, a DeWalt impact driver with a 15 millimeter socket. Uh, you don't necessarily need to use a DeWalt one, that's just the one I had. Additionally, I used a snap-on torque wrench. Um, any torque wrench would likely do, I just used a snap-on one. I also used two Craftsman socket wrenches using a 15 millimeter socket. Um, again, any brand will work for this. However, I did use two different sizes because sometimes the clearance within the wheel wells and um, other parts of this install make it difficult to use larger ones. So I also used a smaller version. Um, additionally, I also used a mallet, um, and then finally I also used a screwdriver, um, which also had the option of using a Phillips and flathead tip, um, one of which the flathead tip was used for 
the removal of the license plate um, attachment frame, uh, which is not necessarily on all cars, but I needed to use it. Additionally, the um, Phillips head was used to remove the uh, fender liner clip. So this is what the first part of the tutorial looks like. You have to take this piece off the front here. Um, it's really easy, as you can see, that's what the final product looks like, but all you have to do is just pull, and it just comes out. Um, you just gotta be careful, you don't wanna break any of these clips. Um, so, just like that. And then, you want to remove these bolts to loosen it because um, on the side here you're going to want to remove these crash bars obviously but there's not enough clearance with the stock bumper so take your impact sometimes that they might be a little tight so what we had to do today was take this and use a mallet because we didn't have a breaker bar to basically hit it off and break it off I've already done it here so um, but then take your impact and there you go you see you can start loosening them but you don't need to take it out all the way necessarily you can remove the full bumper if you want to just bypass everything but uh, yeah so sometimes these bolts won't be able to come off with an impact so you might need like a breaker bar in this case we don't have a breaker bar so we're using a mallet to then loosen them so you can see now it's got enough play there where I can start the impact seat. We'll then start bringing it off. Uh, and then you just continue the process for the other ones. So now you have those bolts loosened, you're actually gonna to wanna to remove the front bumper. So in our case, in order to remove the front bumper, we have to remove the, uh, the license plate bracket because that is holding us up. So we have a flathead screwdriver here that we just need to remove it with. Uh, remove these two bolts and it should come off. Now that you have your front bumper off, you also need to do these because these are on pretty tight. have to do it by hand. There we go. Now, go loose enough where you can just kind of hand it. Heat for this one. So now that you have your two bolts removed, simple as that, removing it. And then 
you take your new part and see that's the difference in the two. Pretty crazy. And then you just slide it in there like so. And then you use your stock hardware, which you had just removed. And then you tighten it. And the, what's nice is the bolts on the bottom are welded from factory. So um, you don't have to worry about keeping those on. They'll just stay there for you. And then you make sure these are threaded. Yep, yeah. yeah. and then I'm gonna take this again and then go the opposite way, obviously. You can fit it in there. Um, all right, so now that you still have your front bumper removed, flip to the other side. You're gonna wanna take this, use a mallet because these are some tight bolts and you can't fit an impact in there. So you're just gonna start hitting these, switch over to this one, and just getting them loose. If, you're, uh, if you have a breaker bar, that's fine. If you're reusing a mallet, basically just get them turning. There we go. Let's see now, slowly getting to the point where I can now do it by hand. And you're gonna wanna do this. Eventually, this is not gonna be able to fit as the clearance will, you'll just have to start doing it by hand, which I will show you eventually once I get them to that point. So now that you have these loose enough, um, they, this is gonna start having trouble with clearance, getting it all the way out. So you can just loosen it with your hand at this point. You can see it'll just pull right out. Do that for both sides. Uh, both of those are removed. This will just slide right out as so. See? And then you're gonna wanna grab your aftermarket one. So in this case, it is this one. And easy enough, you're going to want to just slide that in, line it up with the factory holes, and then you can just use the factory hardware and just thread the bolts in. like that and then on the side do the same and then once you have them screwed in pretty good you can start using this and then obviously make sure you're going the right direction you can start ratcheting these down now you're going to want to make sure you're down at 60 uh, foot pounds um, on these stock bolts here into the crash bar. Um, that's the specs that we're looking to do. So yeah, from now on, I'm just gonna be tightening these and getting them down to that 60 foot pounds. So now that you have your bolts on, you're gonna wanna make sure they're torqued to spec. So set this down to 60 foot pounds. same process for this side so just torquing them down to 60 as recommended and again you can just use the factory hardware for this there you go just like that so now you're gonna want to switch that flathead you used on the license plate over to a Phillips so easy enough then you're gonna want to go in here and there's this fender liner which is going to get in the way of you so you're going to want to unscrew that and it's not very tight obviously you can just use your hand just do it with my fingers so it doesn't fall and i lose it like so so yeah this is just all that comes out so little fender liner pin and then 
Now that gives you play when you want to remove these two bolts right here. As you can tell, this this part was going to be too tall in order to get to the uh, bolt, so we had to switch over to a different one. Still using the 15 size for the bolt and slide that on there. And these aren't really torqued down as much. You can just kind of pull it and they'll come right off. So complete the rest of this process, you're going to want to just remove these. The like that yeah so you're just going to want to remove these in order to slide off your rear crash bar all right so now that we have our bolts loose we just have to pull them out and remove the factory crash bar here and then you're going to want to take your new one and just slide it in there to where your old one was so this part is kind of a tight fit so we're going to take your mallet you're gonna to wanna to just start hitting it in. Basically, because it's just an extremely tight fit in terms of dimensions. Now that you have this malleted in place, um, you can slide the bolts in as so. So now that you have your bolts all tightened in there, you wanna make sure they're torque down to the correct 60 foot pounds. So you're gonna wanna put your torque wrench in there. It is pretty tight. So um, fortunately, I, I think I'm actually good. Um, it's locked there. Let's just put on this one. It's pretty tight as I mentioned, but um, as you can see that, hear that click, that means I'm good. So now that I've torqued it down, put in my fender liner clip. You just push that in there and you take your bolt the anchors in, start kind of putting it in there, but I like to use a, obviously a screwdriver for this because it is a Phillips head. And there you go, it is in. You just push it, it's real easy. All right, so now you're gonna put your front bumper on once you've completed both front crash bars. Um, it should just kind of slide that on. So now that you've gotten both your front crash bars reinstalled and also the rears, you can put on your front bumper. So I've already actually seated it because it was kind of difficult for me to do while also on camera, but um, basically while you have this seated, then you're just gonna wanna just thread the bolts in. Um, you know, so you gotta be careful with this. Oh. Um, Go like that, and then thread it in. And initially, you can just hand tighten them to uh, get it started, so you know your bumper's sitting in the right place. And then you can tighten them with tools. Now let's repeat this for the other side. All right, so now you've hand threaded them. You wanna hold it up. Like that, so then you have them all tight. All right, so also when you're tightening those down with the impact, you wanna make sure the gapping is good on each side of your bumper too. Um, then once you've ensured that, then you wanna make sure these are torqued to spec. 60 foot pounds as earlier. There we go, that's 60 on that one. Sixty. 
go. And finally this one. And then, you're gonna want to slide this one back on, which is really easy. I personally prefer to start with this end and push it in as you go. And you do the same for this side. So you thread this one in, make sure that one's in. And there you have it. Now your bumper is fully reassembled. And also you can put back on your license plate frame again if you have one. So if you've installed bigger tires and want to keep the crash bars and minimize the rubbing, be sure to check out these affordable options from the gang at ReadyLift right here at ExtremeTerrain.com.